Mac Villain. This is a new feature in Router OS 7. This will allow to transform a single physical interface into multiple virtual interfaces. And I'm not talking about VLANs. I'm talking about every sub-interface with a different MAC address. Let's discover this new feature here at the network trip. So first of all, it's important to understand what's the feature, what it's about. So basically this Mac VLAN concept is coming from Linux and now has been implemented in Router OS 7, but you need to, to be using the version 7.12 RC1. This is a still not an stable version, but probably in the next uh, weeks you will get this version in the stable channel. But we have the option to start playing with this feature and then once they have been released to the stable channel, we'll be able to implement this in our production networks. So what exactly is Mac VLAN and how this is going to be different from the traditional VLAN interfaces that we have been using in Router OS? So first of all, Mac VLAN stands for Mac Virtual Local Area Network. It's simply a virtual network interface. This will basically going to take a physical interfaces and it's going to have as children multiple virtual interfaces. The main difference between a Mac VLAN interface and a VLAN interface is that if you remember with VLAN interfaces, all the VLAN interfaces will inherit the MAC address from the parent. So from the perspective of the outside world, or the devices that are connected to the physical interfaces, all the VLAN interfaces will have the same identity. But in this case, instead of relying on a VLAN ID tag, we are going to rely on a different MAC address. So we are providing a completely different identity to each of those sub-interfaces. So you can see here, for example, we have ETHER01, then under ETHER01, we can create different MAC VLAN interfaces, like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So basically, this is the whole point. But probably at this point, you are wondering, okay, that looks like a neat feature, but what the use case? So when are we going to use Mac VLANs? There are some particular scenarios where probably you will require this feature, and this is going to solve some of the issues that you may face. For example, you want to get multiple IP addresses from your upstream service provider. So in some cases, you will have a service provider that is delivering the IPs via HCP. So you have one single cable connected to that provider, you will be able to get only one IP address. You can have only one THCP client on a physical interface. But probably that service provider is going to provide you with more than one IP address. So in that case, in the traditional approach, you will have to connect a switch and they have more than one physical interfaces connected to that switch. So now we don't need that anymore. We can simply create multiple Mac VLAN interfaces, each of those is going to have a completely different MAC address, and then we can simply request IP addresses from different MAC addresses. And that is going to appear in the other side like two completely different interfaces. So let's jump into the lab and let's go with this first scenario. And then we're going to understand when we're going to require MAC VLANs. So I'm going to jump here to GNS3 and we are going to analyze what we have here. So this is the scenario number one. We have a DHCP server. So we have here a DHCP server that can be your ISP. This can be a server in your own network. But the point here is that we have a device that is going to take an IP via DHCP from that server. If I go to ether one and I create a DHCP server, everything is going to be pretty fine. This is going to go with the DHCP process. It's going to get an IP address. But what happens if I need to get more than one IP address from that server. So in that case, without Mac VLANs, I will have to connect a switch and have a second cable connected to a second physical interface. So now with Mac VLANs, we can solve that problem. And let's see how we are going to do that. So let's go now to this device here, RB Client 01. So it's this device that we have over here. And basically, we can start analyzing what we have at this point. So if I go to IP DHCP client, you see that I have a DHCP client on ETHER1. And this is 
successfully obtaining an IP address from the server. So the point now is that I need to get more than one IP address from that server, but using only one physical interface. So I simply need to go to Interfaces, and then I will add a Mac VLAN interface. Remember, you will see this option only if you are running the version 7.12 RC1 or any higher version. So today, this is the latest release candidate available on MyRoti.com. So I will come here, I will add this virtual interface, I will keep the default name, you can see that I will pick the parent interface. So I will keep Ether1, because this is the interface where I need that virtual interface. Then I will simply click OK, and now I have a virtual interface, and I can simply come to IP the ACP client and I can add a new the ACP client under Mac VLAN 1. OK. And now this is going to have a completely different identity. You can see that this is getting a new IP address from that the ACP server. If I double click on the Mac VLAN interface, I can see here the MAC address. You can see that it's sending on 70 v6. That's completely different than Ether 1. And also, it's going to be different than having a VLAN interface. A VLAN interface is going to distinguish the traffic just by adding a VLAN header. But also, going to require a DHCP server running on the same VLAN on the server side. So in this case, we are simply simulating two network interfaces. One physical interface, one virtual interface with completely different identities. So this is one use case. And you can have as many as you want. So I can come here and I can add a new one. So I will add a new Mac VLAN interface. Again, the parent is going to be Ether1. And now we'll add a new DACP client. This is going to be on Mac VLAN2. You can see that this is going to get a new IP address. And from the perspective of the server, those are three completely different hosts, different devices, but they are running on the same physical interface. So let's see how it looks on the server side. So we'll come here to the server, IP, the ACP server, leases, and then you will see all those different options. If you are new on the Myrotic world, and you don't know how to configure a DHCP server or a DHCP client, I recommend you to watch the videos that I'm suggesting here at the top. So now we can see that from the perspective of the server, we have three completely different host devices. So now this is one of the use cases. Let's analyze what is going to be another use case for this topic. So the next one, in some cases, Instead of having the ACP, probably you will have PPPoE. And probably your provider is going to use just one physical link, but you can have multiple sessions. In each session, you are going to get a different IP address. So also in this case, we can have different Mac VLAN interfaces, every interface with a different MAC address, and we can have a PPPoE client running on top of that interface. So let's go with the second scenario. And now we're going to have the yellow box here on the right. So we can see that we have a server. So let's analyze what we have here in that server. So we can come to PPP. You see that there is a PPP server running on Ether1. And I have created two users, user and user2. And then we have a device that is going to be acting as a client. So I will come here to the client number two. And basically here we simply need to create a PPPoE client on Ether1. So I can come to interface. I will add a new interface that is going to be PPPoE client. Then we need to pick the interface. So the server is going to be found on Ether1. And then we go to dial out. And then here we simply need to specify the user and password. And then if this works and we are providing the correct credentials, this is going to look for that server and then it's going to establish the session. So you can see here that we are, are getting this flag running. That means that everything is working successfully. And if I go to status, you can see that the server is 
allocating one IP address. But what happened if I want to get more than one IP address and we are allowed to have multiple PPPV sessions out of that interface? So let's see what is going to happen. So if I add a new client, we'll simply copy the previous one and now it's going to be user2, password2, OK. So you can see here we are getting running in both of them. But actually what is happening is that the server is only going to keep one session. So let's see what is going to happen on the server. So I go here to the server. If I go to active sessions, you can see here that I only have one client connected. And basically those connections will be flapping. Sometimes user 2 is going to be connected. Sometimes user 1 is going to be connected. So you'll see here one user is going out, the next user is getting connected, and this is going to be the behavior. And that's happening because the server only allows one session per host. So now instead of having that, we can take advantage of the Mac VLAN feature. And we can simply add a new Mac VLAN interface on Inter1. And now instead of having the second client running on Ether one, we are going to change the interface to MacVillan one. And now we are going to have two clients. I will disable them just to restart the session. But the server is going to keep those two clients connected. So if I go to the server, now you can see that here we are getting two sessions, two completely different MAC addresses, two different caller IDs. From the perspective of the server, those are two completely different hosts. And basically, now we have used this feature to keep more than one session out of the same physical interface because each of those is going to have a completely different MAC address. Okay, let's go back to the concepts here because there are some notes, some important notes that we need to remember. So MAC VLAN is a concept that is coming from Linux. And commonly, this has been used with Docker containers. But when we are working with uh, Router OS, there is a package to use Docker containers on Router OS, and that is the container package. But in this case, those Mac VLAN sub interfaces won't be used by those containers. So in those cases, we are going to use a different type of interface that is called the virtual Ethernet. So Mac VLAN is commonly going to be used if we want to have multiple DHCP clients or we're going to have multiple PPPV clients just to have different identities under the same physical interface. Another use case, sometimes we have multiple IPs on the same interface. So we have like a primary IP, we have secondary IPs. So in Router OS, all the IPs in one interface are at the same level. So let's go back to GNS3 and let's see this device here. So we have the RB client 01. You see that Ether2 is connected to a switch and then on that switch I have two different devices. So what happens if I have two IPs on Ether2? So everything works pretty fine, no problems. We have IP connectivity, but we are getting the same MAC address for every gateway. If for any reason you want to have different MAC addresses for every gateway, then we can simply create a MAC VLAN sub interface. So let's see how this works. So I will come here to this client, IP addresses, and you can see that currently on Ether2 I have two IPs, 192.168.50.1/24 and also 51.1/24. I have PC1 and PC2. Every PC is connected to a different local area network. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is basically we're going to test the internet connectivity. So remember that in this uh, device we have three TCP clients coming from the provider. So I'm going to add uh, NAT rules because I won't know which uh, IP is going to be used to send the traffic to internet. So I will simply create an interface list that is going to be called internet and here I will add all the interfaces that are going to be sending traffic to internet so those are Ether1, MacVLAN1 and MacVLAN2 and now I can simply go to IP firewall and then NAT and I will masquerade all the traffic going out of those 
internet interfaces. So basically everything that is going out of the Mac VLANs or Ether1 will be masquerade with the IP that we have there. Okay, now those devices should have IP connectivity. By default, we have ECMP routes in router S, so the connection will be distributed across those three uh, different uh, Mac VLAN interfaces and Ether1. So now I will simply come here to PC1. I will check the IP address. So you see that we have that IP address. And now we'll ping that gateway. And if I go show ARP, you can see that this is sending on 0, 0, 0, 001. Basically the MAC address on Ether2. But if I go to the second PC that is going to be in a different uh, network, but still connected to the same interface, also that PC is going to show the same MAC address for the gateway, even though that is a different IP address. So I will ping 182, 168.51.1, show ARP. So you can see 51.1 is showing this MAC address. 50.1 is also showing the same MAC address. So if for any reason I want to have different MAC addresses, then I can simply use a MAC VLAN. So let's go back to RB1, and I will create a new MAC VLAN, and that is going to be on Ether2. And now I will simply move the IP 51.1 to MAC VLAN3. So that means that uh, now this MAC address should be different. So now we'll simply clear ARP and now we'll ping. Okay, that should be on PC2. So clear ARP and now we'll ping 192, 168.51.1. And if I go with show ARP, you can see that now I'm getting a completely different MAC address. I'm still using the same physical interface, but now every IP address is going to be mapped to a different MAC address. So probably this can be helpful for management purposes. There is no, it's not mandatory to use MAC VLANs in this last scenario, but for management purposes, probably you can map different gateways to different MAC addresses. So basically that's uh, MAC VLANs in router OS 7 and to be specific 7.12 RC1. I hope that this video has been informative for you and I see you in the next one.